once you can actually hear me. Welcome everyone, to those here and those watching at home. Uh, thank you for attending this very important forum. We'd like to hear from each candidate tonight and find out their thoughts. There are two seats open. One is running, and that is Margot Morgan. And there are also three new candidates, Melinda Orbach, Enrique Domo, and Jerry Bronson. The seating was selected at random. I want you to think I did so gender specific, so it just happened to make that way. In the order of the questions will be rotated. This not being an official government meeting, there will be no oral communications from the public. But feel free to applaud for each candidate if you like um, or not. But please refrain from editorializing on the candidates you disagree with. I'm Mike Termini, and uh, my partner in crime over there, Dave, is keeping time from the chamber. And they, each candidate will have two minutes per question. We'll be taking questions from the audience should time permit. You can write them down in the cards in the back and pass them up to me. I will be calling the candidates by their first name, which is my um, custom. And I checked with them first to make sure I wasn't disrespecting them anyway, but this is Capitola, little town, little problems, beautiful place. We're all friends and we're all neighbors. There we go. That's right. <laughs> Um, these proceedings are friendly, respectful, and very small town, and we will start by getting just an opening statement from each candidate, and we will start with um, Margo. Great. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to the chamber for putting this on, and Mike and Dave here, as well as the other candidates, and those of you who showed up tonight. It's really nice to see a lot of people in person. Not a lot of people have been coming to meetings, so... Get out there. Um, just a little bit of background. I've been a 19 year resident of Capitola and I've worked in the village just as long as well. Um, homeowner since 2011, which um, I still can't believe. Uh, proud owner of and beautiful raised pit bulls that I have. Um, I'm a small business owner. I've done my personal training certificate, and I also have my degree out of San Jose State University. So I do personal training, nutritional counseling. Um, I also have managed and run many, uh, well, a few handful of restaurants in the village, um, which I think has really made me a well-rounded person uh, with dealing with all, all walks of life and um, many of the people that come to visit our beautiful community. Um, being a personal trainer too, I've gained many friendships and relationships with people within the city and the county alike. Um, in 2003, I served as our mayor. Um, once I was elected, um, the storms hit, the tragic, tragic storms, and um, I was able to support the city through those times. I met the president, I toured our devastated village with him. It was a pretty remarkable experience. Um, and so I'm just, Happy to be here today to continue these um, these exciting years of of being part of the community in this way, and want to be able to continue my leadership and um, our quality of life here in Capitola. Thank you. Thank you, Margot. And just so you know, can everyone see the time? All right, up here. No one's going to mute your mic at the last second, so relax. Don't worry about it. And uh, Melinda. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to the chamber for putting this on, to Mike and Dave for moderating and helping us keep time. Um, so my, my whole life I've gravitated towards service as a nurse practitioner, as a union steward, as a labor coach, tutor, parent, and friend. I'm here to fight for a future where everyone has the opportunity to live where they work and to thrive. I want to work hard to, to increase quality of life for all of my neighbors, prioritizing public and active transportation, economic development, and housing access in order to build a more dynamic future for Capitola. I live in the western half of the city, which has 60% of the population, and, but historically has been underrepresented on city council. I believe that the 41st Avenue corridor, which produces 83% of the sales tax revenue and is expected to accommodate 90% of the future housing development, deserves representation. Um, the future is 41st Avenue, and this community must have a voice in the policy and the budgeting and the shaping of that future. 
I strongly believe in a representative democracy where different lived experiences are valued and heard. I believe that positive social change happens when we create policies that are inclusive and represent the needs of a diverse group of people. As a working mom of three kids, I know how hard it is to raise kids here. I want to ensure that families' voices can be heard, that all voices can be heard, and that we break the barriers to active civic engagement for working parents and other marginalized groups. We are best, most resilient when we come together. Um, take my neighbor, for example. He's a single dad raising two kids in Capitola, two teenage kids. He's an educator and works in a private school in Seaside. And when I knocked on his door on a Sunday, he was on his way to his second job, which is to be the janitor for the city. I think many of the residents on the west side of town also has a similar experience. They are working multiple jobs and uh, going paycheck to paycheck. Um, one of their biggest Thank concerns you. is housing. So I'm running for city council to amplify their voices. Thank you. As well as the other candidates. Thank you, Melinda. And, and of speaking of all voices being heard, is there a lot of is there any way we can cut out the extraneous? Is, is they coming through, so Heather? Get out there. Um, just a little bit of background. I've been a 19-year <laughs> resident of Capitola, and I've worked in the village just as long as I think well. we've got community um, television running simultaneously. So. Yeah. Which um, I still can't believe. Uh, proud owner of and beautiful raised pit bulls that I have. Um, I'm a small business owner. I've done my personal training certificate and I also have my degree out of Take a quick break State here. University. So I do personal training, nutritional counseling. Um, I also have. Don't you love hearing your own voice? Uh, it's just so I thrilling. Who's <laughs> talking? Village, um, which I think has really made me a well rounded person uh, with dealing with all, all walks of yeah, life. Maybe we can and, turn both monitors um, off. Many of the people might that be, come might be to better. our beautiful community. Um, being a personal trainer, too, no. I've gained many friendships and relationships with people within the city and the county alike. Um, in 2003, I served as our mayor. Um, once I was elected, um, the storms hit, the tragic, tragic storms, and um, I was able to support the city through those times. I met the president. I toured our <laughs> devastated yeah. village with him. It was a pretty remarkable experience. Um, and so I'm just happy to be here today to continue these um, these exciting years of, of being part of the community in this way and want to be able to continue my leadership and um, our quality of life here in Capitola. Thank you. Thank you, Margo. And just so you know, can everyone see the time all right up here? No one's going to mute your mic at the last second, so relax. Don't worry about it. And uh, Melinda. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to the chamber for putting this on, to Mike and Dave for moderating. Hey. Let's see if the microphone still works again. Test, test. Yeah, we do. Yes. Hello? Yes. Oh, no. it works. Right. Here we go. Okay. Um, Jerry, you're up. Um, well, thanks for fixing, fixing the technical difficulties, and uh, thank you to the chamber for putting on this event, and Mike and uh, Dave for coming out here tonight. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the community for coming out. It's um, great to see everybody show up. Um, my family and I have lived in Capitola, the sweet little town that is only two miles across, for the last 14 years. I have four daughters, and I have five grandchildren. I have experience um, uh, from being a union president, labor negotiator, I also worked in a school district for 19 years where I was ultimately responsible for maintenance, operation, transportation, facilities, and also building bond construction projects where we built schools and community centers collectively together with a joint venture with some cities. At that same time, I was also a reserve deputy sheriff where I volunteered in Santa Clara County. I have started a small business and I own a small business that specializes in project management and also general contracting work. I'm a planning commissioner. I've been on the planning commissioner, and I've been uh, vice chair for last year. Um, I also am a board member of the chamber, um, the Safety Foundation, and I also sat on uh, as a board member for the Mid County Senior Center. I'm I was chair of the uh, Capital Wharf Enhancement Project, where we, our community came together. We raised four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for the wharf. Um, this last year, I was honored, and I received an award for Person of the Year. 
and I also was recognized from the Volunteer Center of Santa Cruz County as Volunteer uh, of the Year for them at the same time. I've been endorsed by all the local unions here that represent the city employees, our Police Officers Association, our BIA, which is um, the board of the, uh, the Small Business Association down in the village. I also been endorsed by our two county supervisors that oversee Capitola, 10 previous mayors, my fellow, my fellow planning commissioners, and many other local business and community members. And I look forward to having a fruitful um, discussion and answering your questions that you guys have tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Enrique. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, including my fellow Capitolians at home. Uh, thank you all for being here today. My name is Enrique Domo Jr. and I am running for a seat on Capitola City Council. I have lived in this beautiful, beautiful community for almost 15 years in January. <clears throat> and during that time, I have seen firsthand both the challenges we face and the potential we have. I am passionate about creating a community that works for everyone, whether it's ensuring safe streets, strengthening our youth, after school programs or fostering economic opportunities. I believe in the power of local government to make meaningful ch change, and I am committed to listening to your concerns and collaborating with, with others and finding practical solutions. I'm running because I know we can build a more vibrant, inclusive, and thriving community, and, I'm a, and I am excited to be part of that effort. Thank you, and I look forward to discussing how we can move our city forward together. Thank you again. Thank you, Enrique. On to our first question. <clears throat> this is an easy one. You should, you should only take one minute. Tell us how you stand on the rail trail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad you got the irony of that. Um, can you envision collaborating with the County of Santa Cruz and the RTC for the use of our historic Capitola trestle for safe pedestrian and bicycle passage until such a time that the trestle may be needed for rail transportation. And we'll start with Enrique. Looking through my notes. <clears throat> uh, that's a, I know that's a very high topic, one of the topics in Capitola. Um, I've walked the trestle. I walk it quite often. Um, I do believe the trestle is unsafe to walk right now. Um, I would hate to see an injury or even worse, a fatality on the trestle. Um, you know, it's a push between the two people that are trying to, or the governments that are trying to push for the rail, push for the trail. I would suggest that we come up with a temporary solution. Um, temporary solution would be making the trestle safe for everybody to walk on, not just the youth, but the elderly. I would, I wouldn't, suggest picking up the tracks or pulling out the tracks, but maybe we can lay down a platform temporarily so it would be more accessible to people with bikes, build some kind of a trail um, on each side. Um, that would be my suggestion. But right now, I do think that the trestle is unsafe, um, and I hope that we do not have some kind of a tragedy there, and I think that we need to do something temporarily to prevent that. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Jerry. Yeah, thank you. So um, the, the trestle is um, something I think we should talk about is that it's owned by the RTC. Um, and so the RTC has the right of what the trestle will be used for. Um, I think the question's worded, you know, could there be collaboration? And I think collaboration takes a sign of leadership from many different entities, um, being city council, the county supervisors, and the RTC to see if that would be as an option. I think a lot of these questions will get resolved here um, in the beginning of the following, in the beginning of next year, 25, when um, right now a, a study is being done for what it's going to cost for the rail and trail process. And I think once that's obtained and we see what the exact costs are, I think that's going to bring all the members of the community and stakeholders to the table to address, is that a feasible option? Is it going to be rail trail? And is there going to be enough funding and how that funding is going to come into play to um, see the full fruition. We know that there was Measure L that was passed, um, and so that has some conflicting information about uh, path of travel, and so I think um, there's uh, with bikes and stuff. Then we have Measure D that says it's gonna be rail trail. Um, and so there's a lot of these conflicting things, but I think it's gonna really come down to the bottom line of 
when we look at the budget that comes in on what the cost is going to be to uh, put that together. Um, right now, just the trail portion that is being run right now through the, uh, the county in, in the a couple of segments, uh, segment seven and eight, um, is running at about $25 million a mile. And so um, that is going to be an astounding number that is going to, I think, again, force the community to come together and make a final decision on how that looks. And I'm quite sure that would then open up options um, uh, with the potential of looking at how the trestle was going to be used in the final when it comes down to the community having to pay for the rail and trail and how that looks. So thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate the eye contact from all of you, but the cameras are out there. So, <laughs> Melinda. Hi, yes, so uh, starting us with a controversial topic already. Um, I believe in building the trail and planning for the rail, and obviously um, there is a current engineering study happening and um, depending on the results of those study, we can determine whether it is feasible. Um, because there's a lot to consider. It's expensive. Who's going to pay for it? The, the trestle is owned by the RTC. It is not owned by Capitola. Um, and it is a countywide resource in terms of connection across our communities, as well as eventually uh, connecting with the state rail plan. And I understand that any project that is to be successful needs to have community input. So it depends on what the community wants and needs after we get the, the feasibility study, the study in terms of how much it'll cost, whether there, there will be ridership to support that cost and whether people are willing to pay. But in terms of uh, um, uh, rail banking, I don't support because we need to keep all sustainable transit options for the future generations. We may not have the need now, but we don't know in 50 years or in 70 years. So we need to really also think forward into the future in terms of what that possibility is and can be. Um, I know that, you know, we want, you know, we all want a way to get around the traffic that is congesting our streets. So having, completing the trail, ten, trail segment 10 will help that a great deal because that will connect our community to the rest of North County. We can bike to uh, Simpkins, to the wharf, to um, uh, the harbor and North County and Santa Cruz. I think that'll be really important. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Margo. Great, thank you. Um, yes, definitely. I am a huge proponent of all types of transportation and I wanna be able to utilize what Capitola has right now. Um, which would be to start using a trail and then potentially if there is a plan or the option for more moving forward, then that's all about timing. It'll be about funding as well to see how far the RTC is willing to take rebuilding the trestle and making it more usable. Um, but in the meantime, yes, we definitely need to work with them. We need to you know, trust in them that they will help to make decisions that will enhance our community and um, and be mindful of our tiny city, which even though we're so tiny, we're in two separate segments of this trail. So there's a lot on either side of the city that I think will have to be looked at while these segments are being built and how we're gonna move forward with being a part of that those two sections. Um, I think Capitola has taken some steps already. We've entered into a, um, a contract with B-Cycle, which is the bicycle renting um, that will hopefully help to utilize that trail once it becomes usable and really connect us with other parts of the county and allow us to um, expand with within tourism, um, within city to city areas, um, people that want to visit downtown or vice versa, people coming from that area here. I think that can open up a lot of possibilities um, for us to gain some revenue and um, maintain relationships with the RTC and within and within the county um, with other agencies as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing um, what the future will bring and how, you know, how Capitola can be a part of that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Margot. And for anyone who likes some light reading, there is a 26-page study by the RTC specifically on our trestle that was done by Rail Pros in 2021, and it's just riveting. Um, but actually, there are a couple of charts there with dollar signs on them that you sh should look at. Um, let's move on to the next question. And by the way, if you need me to repeat a question, feel free. Capitola already has a density, traffic, and safety problem. How are you going to help ensure new development does not negatively impact safety, traffic, parking, and the quality of life? Traffic into and through Capitola Village has become increasingly worse for those who live there. What would you do to help reduce traffic in Capitola Village? And are you in favor of eliminating all auto traffic on the Esplanade in the summer months? And we'll start with Jerry. Yeah, um, so thank you. Um, so yeah, we're all aware that there's traffic congestion in Capitola, especially through the village. Um, I would not be in support of closing down the village um, on a permanent basis uh, for the summer. Um, I think there's some options that I would want to reach out to the community to look at um, what that would, um, how that would work. So one of my ideas that I've shared is um, if you want to refer to the Esplanade um, and you would take out, maybe we look at removing the parking along the hotel side, uh, where the Capitol Hotel side is, and creating that as a pass-through lane. And the center lane would be more of the waiting line uh, for people that are pulling out for cars. I think we should go about this in baby steps, and I think we should definitely reach out to the businesses down there to see um, what effect these steps could have on them. Um, I would support moving forward in, in those steps, like looking at a pass-through traffic, and to see if that worked. Um, it could come a time that we'd want to look and maybe the community spoke together, um, shutting down the whole village, but I think that would be a drastic step to, uh, step to go to that point. We also could look at um, additional options. Um, we could look at um, you know, running a, a shuttle that would run from the mall to the village um, during the summer that would be better utilized, um, and then making sure that we're marketing that. Um, we could also look at um, how parking works in Capitola um, with the upper and lower village and signage about delineating where that parking is and looking at traffic uh, flow through those areas. Um, so that's um, where I stand on traffic in Capitola. I think it's uh, here um, and it's going to continue to get worse, but um, we also can look at enhancing um, some other methods of transportation regarding uh, bike programs and stuff like that and maybe establishing a better bike corral um, we are very successful at that during the Art and Wine Festival and when we use the David Ling uh, office um, for bike parking. But right now, there's not a designated spot big enough to address that. So thank you. Thank you. Melinda. That's a loaded question. Can you repeat it? <laughs> okay. No, I understand. There are longer ones. Yeah. Um, Cavatola already has a density, traffic, and safety problem. How are you going to help ensure new development does not negatively impact safety, traffic, parking, quality of life? Traffic into and through Capitola Village has become increasingly worse for those who live there. What would you do to help reduce traffic in Capitola Village? And are you in favor of eliminating all auto traffic on the Esplanade in the summer months? That's a loaded question. Okay. So first of all, I want to say that the city population of Capitola has not grown since 1990. That's 35 years. We've stayed consistently at about 10,000 residents. So... Um, what we're feeling isn't necessarily the density of the people living here, but really the traffic congestion. People want to come here because now we've got this, we've got this beautiful quaint uh, seaside town where people want to spend their time. Um, so, you know, I think in terms of housing development, you know, most of the multi family housing was built in the 1960s and 1970s, and only a handful of small multifamily projects have been developed over the last few, de several decades. So I, I would say, you know, it's hard. Traffic is hard. Um, I think we should have a new metro station along 41st and have reliable transportation uh, to bus lines with 15-minute headways for so people can reliably use active public transportation. We need to um, make safer bike lanes as well as have a shuttle service, shuttle service going throughout the city so we can shuttle our tourists into the village and back up. Um, 
we currently have our cliff resiliency project uh, in the books. And in terms of designing what cliff drive will look like, it will depend on what the community input is, what we'd like to see, whether we want a designated uh, bus lane, a designated shuttle lane, uh, or uh, better bike lanes. Um, that would help alleviate some of the traffic and some of the, the traffic flows in and out of the village. Whether to close off Esplanade, I think we need to talk to the stakeholder holders in terms of the businesses and what the community wants. Um, but we should look into it to see if that's an option, whether it's feasible in terms of costs, because we we we're generating a lot of money in tra in parking uh, from those spots. So thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Margo. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting concept. Um, I would be a proponent for looking into some piloting programs of to stop not stopping all traffic or maybe stopping all traffic, maybe on a weekend basis or an event basis. I think we see a lot of success with the Art and Wine Festival. Um, obviously, nothing would have to be to that great big of a scale. But um, in talking with the business owners and seeing, um, you know, in collaboration with, say, maybe a sip and stroll, things that are already part of our community calendar, if that's something that we could um, kind of also put on the table when when these events are happening. Um, you know, I, if you spend a lot of time in the village, which I do, it's, it, is, it can be a little frustrating because you see people just driving through, just taking video of Capitola. I do not blame them one bit, but they're not necessarily looking for parking, and it does cause quite a bit of congestion. Um, so it is a lot of people that are just traveling down the coast, viewing California, and, you know, it is part of why we all live here and and how we all got here is because of this backdrop. And so while I can't blame them, it does it does cause a little uh, congestion. So that is why I, I am in huge support of our, our e-bike program that we have. Um, we just passed at our last city council meeting a, a program, it's called Daylighting, where we remove certain parking spots around um, uh, either four-way or three-way intersections um, to allow for pedestrian safety so that there isn't a designating parking spot right, uh, say, on like a right turn lane. So you have more visibility of the pedestrian. That spot would either become a loading zone or a place that we could have bike racks. So I think that's um, something moving forward that the city is, is, is going to be driving, and I think it can help with... Um, inviting those people that are using different modes of transportation to come down and, and support our village. Thanks. Thank you, Marco. Enrique. Yes, uh, as we all can agree, traffic is really bad. Um, I'm leaving work at New Brighton, and the traffic going towards, you know, south, it's just backed up. And there's several reasons why. One, the bridge is closed. Uh, the Capitola Bridge is closed. Second, they closed off the intersection to, or not the intersection, but the uh, to get on Highway One, uh, they closed that today, so that was great. Uh, the one, the one, the one lane in front of Knob Hill that causes some more issues. Uh, so the traffic is bad. Um, what I would, I would, I want to say no on closing the village because me living outside of the village, when it's hard to get down there when they close it, it's like, oh man, they closed the village. That means I have to, you know, figure out how, where I'm going to go, where I'm going to park, and I'm not the only person in Capitola. So I understand how other people feel. Uh, but closing down the village would also, I believe, take away from some of the businesses that are down there because they're not going to be able to drive by. And they may say it's just too packed or they'll just not drive by because they're not going to be able to see what's down there. At least they have the opportunity to see what the village is down there. Um, I would definitely invest in safer sidewalks, um, crosswalks, um, and bike lanes to ensure that uh, non-vehicle uh, commuters are protected from traffic making streets safer for everyone. Um, I would ensure that new developments have sufficient on-site parking for both residents and visitors and avoid burdening nearby neighborhoods with overflow parking issues. And with everything, I would engage with the community first before any decision would be made. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Okay. How can we provide additional housing to meet the needs of our community and state requirements for our approved housing element, while at the same time maintaining the character and charm of our community. If a five-story apartment building fits all the requirements of our zoning and building codes, 
how would you feel about just having this built in Capitola? And how does the Planning Commission serve the city, and is it relevant? What steps will you take to ensure that new development in our neighborhoods preserve the character of the community and doesn't negatively impact the quality of life for all of our residents? And we'll start with Melinda. Another packed question. Um, so the six cycle housing element has already been adopted. Um, and now it's our job to implement the programs and the policies over the next eight years. I think the first step to, provi to providing more workforce housing is to re-implement the city's inclusionary housing ordinance for rental units. Um, this has been excluded in the housing element, and this is being done in other cities. If we're truly serious about building the homes that we need for our workforce, we will need to build those homes. And 90% of those um, projected housing that's been proposed is going to be on the 41st Avenue corridor. Um, and, you know, the mall site is one of the main sites we've been talking about for a long time, but it's not the silver bullet to our housing issues. We really need to reimagine all of 41st Corridor and start putting some mixed-use development with commercial on the bottom and housing on top. Um, and we can't talk about housing without transportation, so we really need to think about a new metro station with uh, reliable public transportation, as well as prioritizing the completion of segment 10 of our trail uh, so that we can connect our communities to other amenities and services and schools. Let's, what was the other part of the question? The, the, planning, the planning Commission's part and the role they play <clears throat> and whether in view of state regulations it remains relevant in our community. Um, Planning Commission obviously is important in terms of uh, variances and other uh, planning things that are not uh, with objective standards, right? I mean, my time is up already, but in terms of um, there are ways to streamline development, and um, I would love for you to check out my website in terms of ideas on how we can streamline Thank development. You. Thank you. Um, Margaret, before you go, Joe, you're the closest. Would you take a look at the thermostat? I think the AC went off automatically. And I'm, I'm seeing people fading in the audience. I'm one of them. So maybe you can do some magic. And Heather's, we have our technology expert here, so she may be able to help. Margo, you're on. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I think it was a staggering event, us um, passing um, this housing element for um, quite a lot of units, um, over 1,300 to be exact. Um, so well, what it helps us do is it did actually help us pr promote ADUs, which I think are a really nice way to provide um, more housing um, in on a smaller scale so that it doesn't feel like there is a big five-story apartment complex being built right next door. It's probably going to house somebody's family member or somebody close to them. Um, and we've by going through this housing element, we've made the ADU process quite a bit easier. There's a lot less permitting, um, and it, it probably won't even have to come all the way to council or planning. It, the, the process has become quite easier, so I think that will become more attractive to people. Um, in, a, in a lot of our permitting processes, there are um, height requirements and things like that that we rely heavily on our planning commission to make sure that we're adhering to those and making sure that any new development is is going to reflect well on the city and aesthetically and size wise and things like that. Um, so it, it can be daunting when you see all of these rezoning areas and things like that, but I think in the long run it's going to help us maintain um, sort of our control in Capitola as much as we can um, because these are state mandated things that we have to do. Um, so it, it um, yeah, so it, it allows us to have control over those specs. Um, if we didn't do this, um, any developer, it's uh, like a sort of like a loophole or tool that any developer could use um, without rezoning, without doing this housing element. Um, they can just come in with no zoning 
no specs, no nothing, and build whatever they want. So by adopting this, it's really going to help, I think, protect Capitola at, as best as we can. Thank, Thank you. you. Enrique. Um, yes, I, I would not want the Planning Commission to, to leave. I, um, I think they do a good job, so I want to state that. I also, um, I just want to go and say that the biggest empty space that we have right now is the mall. Um, I think that we need to figure out how we can start there. We need to call them back up um, and set up a meeting. You're right. Um, it may not be that easy, but maybe some uh, a breath of fresh air can can change some people's mind down there. Um, just going by my notes, I'd also work to ensure that new developments would complement the existing community and enhance rather than diminish the quality of life, safety, and traffic conditions. Um, I would suggest design standards that require new develop, developments to complement the existing architectural style, scale, and character of the neighborhood. What I would oppose, I've had a lot of community members come up to me and say they, they you know, would like to propose tear down a triplex and build something that's bigger. Um, I hope that in the planning, you're going to think about traffic, parking, where the residents going to park, where their visitors going to park, and communicate with the and listen to the people who live in that that area as well too. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, thank you. Um, so, uh, as a planning commissioner, we've been uh, very involved in the um, housing element. Um, so, it's been identified by the state that we are supposed to plan for 1,336 units. Um, that part has been done, and um, which I think um, we should commend our city staff and the planning commission and city council for getting that part of it taken care of. Um, the real work begins now with zoning. Um, we have to go through and zone um, different parts of our community to make it sure that that housing can be planned for. Of course, when I say planned for, it has to be planned for. It's not built by the city. When that happens, um, there's a process um, that goes through with the rezoning and um, our community's noticed, and you might get this little green postcard or you might get this little green uh, paper posted in front of your house. Um, and that's what exactly the stuff the city did uh, a few months ago. And our planning commissioner, I think Margo referred to, um, not a lot of people attend to these meetings, but that meeting was heavily attended and uh, the room was completely filled and we're into overflow. And uh, I think the message that we heard from the community is that they want to be involved in this process. Um, our planning commissioner and my fellow planning commissioners took that step back and looked at it as an opportunity to move, to move this um, to next year. Um, so in January, the city uh, is going to make sure they go out, uh, publish exactly what the impacts are going to be, what it looks like, and come together as a community and have um, more focus on what the community wants to see, how this development is going to come into play. Um, it is coming, and I don't think we can run from that, um, but it can be um, worked through, and it can be a joint venture with the community, with the city, and with the Planning Commission. I think the Planning Commission is very instrumental in making sure that we uh, continue to make sure that what makes Capitola quaint and charming continues to be here at the same time we identify where we are and making sure that we meet the state mandates. So thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. And we're going to start this question off with Margo. So imagine that you owned the mall. What would you build on it? It's my budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a dream budget. All right, okay. let's but go. Realistically, realistically, the question is, what would you like to see built on the mall? Got it. Um, with regard to whether it be housing, filling the vacant commercial spaces in Capitola, because as we all know, the mall is a vast wasteland right now. So, yes, carry on. Margo. that is the case. Um, yeah, definitely. I, um, I This has been something that has been on my brain for quite some time, well before I ever even got involved with city council. Um, and I think that mixed use is going to be the greatest opportunity that we have, um, providing housing, um, possibly some a small hotel or something like that. Um, you'd have to probably own the entire portion of the mall. It's kind of split up into different parcels right now so that could cause some issues, but um, I would love to see, you know, shopping or eating or something on the ground floor um, with um, maybe affordable housing for the people that would come and work there. Uh, that corridor at 41st is 
um, where a lot of retail is done, or I feel like more probably at this point could be done, seeing as how the mall is looking a little sad. Um, so I would love to see outdoor space, things for families to, to partake in, you know, so everybody has something when they go there. Um, another great thing that I would like to see is sort of uh, creating a little bit of uh, conjunction with the village, whether that be a shuttle or a more um, used bike lane or bike path from the mall to the village. So people coming from out of town um, could see both places, two beautiful aspects of Capitola all at once. Um, you know, it is the only mall for this county pretty much. So people from Santa Cruz, Watsonville, Scotts Valley um, would be able to utilize a space like that and um, then also hit the village or something like that. So I would definitely like to see um, a vast majority of things. I think that would be the most well-rounded um, solution for Capitola. Thanks. Thank you. Enrique. So your question is, what would you like to see built in the mall and how would you go about, um, I guess, enticing businesses to come and fill all the commercial spaces we have right now? now if it was me, um, first thing I'd want to do is have a, a sports recreation center for our youth in there and include like batting cages, indoor soccer, a restaurant so you can sit down with your family while you're waiting for your next game. Um, that's what I would, because I've traveled so, I'm going to Vegas for my son's baseball game and just the, you know, the flight, the hotels, the, the fees. Well, I think that we can have something similar to that here. Um, I know that we go to Watsonville, they have an indoor soccer field there. We go to Twin Lakes in San Jose for baseball. I think that we can definitely have something here if I got to do what I want to do. And of course... <laughs> Of course, I would definitely add some restaurants. I like Margot's idea of, you know, I, I wouldn't want to take anything away from the village, but since she works in the village, I will sit there and agree with that. It would be nice to have a different kind of a restaurant in Capitola where they have several TVs. It's wide open. Um, you can sit there and watch. If you're in the sports, you can watch any game you want, f f you know, chicken wings or whatever it is you want to order. And I, I do agree with a hotel on that property as well, too. It's just, we, do, we need to do something with that land. I mean, put some solar panels there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we do need to, that was a joke. Uh, I do agree we need to do something to the mall. I'm tired of looking at it. Um, even across the street, um, over in the mall, they have actually better shops than they do have in the mall. With, you know, So that would be my dream. Indoor soccer fields, base batting cages, volleyball nets, anything that our community can use. Thank you. Maybe the Capitola Warriors? Okay. That went out on community television. I'm sorry, Santa Cruz, but Jerry, what do you have? Capitola, that would be a great idea. <laughs> Just saying. Sorry, no problem. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, first thing is about my ideas, and I look at a vision of what, what could the Capitola Mall be. Um, I see it as an open-door uh, place for um, vendors and stores to be. Um, I see a, some new anchor stores going there that would attract everybody around the county to come there. It's going to have to have a large piece of housing in there, and we focus on, you know, 15 minutes cities they refer to it as, and so you live where you work, and so service workers have a place to live, also a place for workforce housing. Um, obviously, there's already a metro hub there. That would be enhanced, and that would be um, more used by our community, especially, um, in the, and we're talking about strictly development at the mall, so used by that. Um, it would be great to have a vision of a hotel there because um, TOT tax is one of the biggest incomes for the city, so we can envision that. The, right now, um, the occupancy rate in hotels in Capitola are high. They're in the high 80s, and, um, into low 90s sometimes. Um, and then a recreational place for Enrique here. Um, uh, the family focus, I envision, you know, if there's pickleball there or some courts like that, that would attract people to be there um, well into the evenings and, and have like a league. But um, again, I think there's one thing we, to be important. You know, there is no I in team. So it's not what I want. I think it's what the community wants. I would um, request that the city has like a summit meeting and we need to include staff members, city council members, planning commissioners, we should bring all local three chambers that are involved in the community here. 
the BI and our county supervisors come together and how we can as a community and the county come together and look at this mall as a central hub for everything. Um, and so that's how I envision it. And I just want to remind everybody as we all crack jokes and we've referred to the mall, there are 60 businesses in the mall right now that provide a place for artists and local vendors to sell. And so we should keep a focus on them. We should go out and support them because they do bring tax measure, but it's also um, amazing to think that there are 60 stores there at the same time, which is, resembles about the same size as the village. So please go out and support them. Thank you, Jerry. Melinda. Thank you. I think um, in order for our city to be resilient, we have to be proactive. We have to be proactive about economic development, especially in the 41st Avenue corridor. Uh, we also have to be fiscally sustainable. And um, if I had my way with the Capitola Mall site, I would love to see a first class hotel with a conference center. Uh, many professionals travel all over for conferences, and why not make Capitola a place to come to? People want to come already. How do we make it so that we have the infrastructure to support the tourism that's already currently happening? So having a conference center uh, um, with the hotel, I mean, the, site, the, the mall site has already been approved for 75 feet. So I can see a rooftop bar I can see a rooftop garden with, uh, with Monterey Bay views. Uh, obviously, a new metro station to couple with that development. Um, I, I, I want to see mixed-use commercial space with commercial on the bottom, housing on top. I want to see more outdoor space for the communities to gather. Um, I would love to see the Museum of Discovery as part of that uh, 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 new space with an outdoor portion so kids and families um, can be in that space and really enjoy it. Um, and, you know, I really want it to be a, vi a vibrant place for business, a vibrant place for our community where there is shopping and restaurants. Um, and, uh, you know, I think in terms of financial sustainability. Hotel makes sense because of the TOT taxes that it brings to the city. Um, obviously that, you know, space is an issue. So competing with housing is gonna be a challenge, but hopefully we can move forward and figure that out. Okay, again, the next one is long and involved. So if I need to repeat it, I will. We'll start with Enrique on this one. <clears throat> A successful city council member typically spends 20 to 30 hours per week in their position and on other boards. Council members are required to sit on several local and county committees and commissions such as the Metro, the RTC, Zone 5 stormwater abatement, sanitation, criminal justice, and city committees like Art and Cultural, Public Safety Foundation, Finance Advisory, just to name a few. Which hold special interest to you and which will you request to be on? And I realize that when it comes to Margo, it'll be a more, which ones are you on? But that's fine. And Reggae, you're on. Real quick, how many hours did you say a week? It can be, <laughs> I heard 200. it can be up to 20 hours to 30 hours a week, depending on who's meeting where and when and what. And um, you know, then there's budget week and that's a whole narrow story. <laughs> um, well, currently I uh, serve on the Capitola Chief Advisory Committee. Uh, Capitola Historical Museum Board, Campus Kids Connection CKC Board, and I'm currently the union president for our classified staff at the SoCal Union School District. And as you know, I do work at New Brighton Middle School. Um, I work there from about 7 a.m. to about 7 o'clock, some days, depending on what kind of athletics we have going on in the evening time. But I would definitely commit to taking on a different role um, that means I would have to let go of some of my other job duties, and I would definitely take more roles into the city because that's where I'm passionate. That's where I want. That's where I want to be. Um, and I believe. Did I answer your question? Uh, any particular committees that I might have mentioned that you may be aware of that council members sit on? County commissions? No. Um, I I I would like to join the planning commission. Um, that would be something that I'd want to do because I would like to know. Um, what's going on? A lot of times you you go on. The clock didn't start, by the way, Mr. Payton. Or did I run out of time? Dave? 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 
Did we not start the clock? <laughs> and, and how much did Enrique pay you for that? <laughs> Well, he noted he was on the museum board. We go back, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got it. Just taking care of you. You can, you can wrap up now, Enrique. It's all right. Um, I, would, I would have to look at what boards would be feasible to me and what I'm interested in. Um, I haven't really thought about it too much, but I would like to engage in a little bit more in the community. Great. Thank you. Jerry. Uh, could you repeat that question, Mike? A successful city council member typically spends 20 to 30 hours per week in their position and on other boards. Council members are required to sit on several local and county committees and commissions, such as the Metro, the RTC, Zone 5 Stormwater, Sanitation, Criminal Justice. There are city committees that we place council members on, such as Art and Cultural, Public Safety Foundation, Finance Advisory, to name just a few. Which holds special interest to you and which would you request to be on? Sure. Um, so thank you. Um, I think the hours of contribution might be a little bit off um, from the standpoint. I think that it will take a lot more dedication um, as you um, look at the needs of where our city is changing. And so right now, as a planning commissioner, I'm spending about that um, every week, um, and that's when we're meeting once a month. So I look at that probably be increased. And so with that being increased, um, committees that um, I would like to be involved with, I would love to be involved with the RTC, understanding that is going to be um, a project in the future that's going to shape our community for years to come, and I'd love to be a part of that. I would like to sit on the sanitation department um, to understand what the impact of this development that's coming into our community and that's um, being man 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 mandated by the state. Um, we need to make sure our infrastructure is in play with that, and I think with my background, that would be of an asset to that. Um, I also would like to be involved in the art and cultural um, as a representative. Um, Volunteer work that I've done has um, I've had a connection and a bond to providing some of these services um, and um, an advisement, and I would like to be still um, a key part of that. Um, I think when we talk about giving time, um, we have to make sure that we have the time to give, and we're dedicated to that time. Uh, I are I'm working full time. I have a full time job. I work 40 to 50 hours a week at the present time, and then I try to match, uh, you know, with that with my. Uh, planning commission obligations with also volunteering. So I would, uh, I know what it takes to give to be a successful uh, council member, and um, I know I would have the dedication and the ability to provide that and make sure I represent our community correctly on these uh, couple of different um, organizations and committees. So thank, thank you. you. Linda. Thank you. Um, given all my talk about wanting a new metro station, uh, with new bus lines and 15-minute headways. I'd love to be on the Metro board, um, as well as the Finance Advisory Committee board, um, Finance Advisory Committee. I tried to apply, actually, uh, knowing that there were two business spots that were vacant for, I think, a couple of years. Um, but then I applied, and some businesses decided they wanted to take that position. So I was unable to serve. Um, I'm also interested in the Commission of Environment. Um, I have a bachelor's degree from UC Berkeley um, in envir environmental biology. So I'd really love to dig in in terms of how we can um, combat some of our climate, big climate issues, given that we are uh, a village on sea level and we've got cliff erosion at six inches a year. Um, I really want to be able to brainstorm ideas on how we can combat the sea level rise and uh, climate change and make our community more resilient in the future. Uh, in terms of commitment, uh, I, you know, currently work as a nurse practitioner and I've got three kids and it's, it's tough. Running this campaign has been really tough. We've been spending many, many hours uh, late night doing campaign work. I made my website for the very first time and spent many, many hours on it. This has been a test in terms of what me and my family, with Matt and the kids, have been able to do and accomplish. And so I am committed to, to spending the time to talk to my constituents and, and work together to solve some of our really pressing issues. Um, and I, you know, my one day off a week, I usually have my child, but I've put him in daycare for that extra day so that I can do this type of work and I'm committed to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Margo. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, so um, I have served on um, our Commission for the Environment since I was elected in 2020. Um, so I'm hoping to continue to do that um, if I'm appointed for that. Um, I've been an alternate on the Sanitation Board along with um, the uh, Criminal Justice, uh, which those are two boards where you work um, within the county, which is kind of nice because you see different faces and you kind of see what's going on in our neighboring cities. Um, I also served on the FAC while I was the vice mayor. Um, it's certainly an, an interesting eye-opening thing. I'm not a huge numbers person, so I'm grateful for our staff that we have numbers people because <laughs> that's good. Um, it's, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of been, awesome to be able to see different sides of the city within these different groups and shout out to all those volunteers that sit on those commissions currently and will so and have um, these appoint appointments can sort of change throughout um, your city council career which I think can be nice to sort of freshen things up for people's schedules and things like that um, and different ideas um, Arts and cultural does sound really um, fun to me. I do appreciate a lot of the events that they put on within the city and um, just being a part of those, I think uh, would be would be fulfilling as well. Um, and it is a time commitment, you know, it's um, you don't really know until you're in it. And um, last four years have uh, definitely taught me a lot about time management um, and you know, do, doing what you can do. There's only so much one human can do, and so give yourself grace, but to show up when you need to show up. And I think that um, that's just really important for anything in life, not just this, but thank you. Thanks, Margo. And you know, attaining office is one thing. Coming back for re-election when you know what you're in for, nicely done. And Jerry, be careful of sanitation. As glorious as garbage collection is, sanitation is not trash collection. I'll let you figure that one out. Okay, it's our sewer system, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, what will you do, and we'll start you off with this, Jerry, what will you do to promote transparency and accountability within the city council and to the people of Capitola? How will you involve the community in decision-making processes and ensure transparency in council actions? And as a follow-up, have you participated in the Capitola City Local Government Academy? Um, so um, I'll answer the end part first. Yeah, so the, it's amazing. Capitola puts on a, a leadership uh, academy, and they strongly encourage candidates that are running for office to do uh, to run for that. Um, I also took that to another level, and I attended Leadership Santa Cruz, um, which really um, brings all the dynamics of the county into play, um, and you can understand what pressures the Capitol has on it. So it's not just that we're single for focusing just on Capitola itself. <clears throat> when you talk about transparency, um, I believe in transparency. You can go to my website. It's one of the number one things I talk about. Um, we need to have more transparency in, um, in the city government. Uh, if we look at our, our, our housing element, when, um, which has such a huge impact on our community, when it was put out, we had 1% participation in that. Um, that is not enough to understand what the community voice is. And so there should be a different approach to making sure we, um, our community is included in that. Um, uh, I think that there's lots of opportunities to have more community involvement. I believe that we should go out to our community where they are at. Um, we can look at that as options of looking at, we always have our meetings at night. Um, is that the best thing for our community? Does every meeting need to be at night? Can, can, we, uh, can we have meetings um, during the middle of the day so that a parent that works maybe a night shift will be able to have accessibility to that? Um, we have a large population of people that are retired. Are we making sure um, our transparency and our governance is accessible to them? Um, you know, we can look at opportunities of having meetings during the middle of the day. And I think these are options that we should look at and kind of sh shift out of the model of meetings are on Thursday night at six or seven o'clock, and those are the time. It's very hard to come down here as a community member and stand right there at that podium and speak to the dais or about an issue and especially if it's not even on the agenda and you can't be talked about, and then there's no follow-up to that. So going out to our community is extremely important. And there's one last thing I would like to challenge if I got on city council is making our city council more accessible. And when I talk about that, we'd be holding community hours um, and so that a city council member would be accessible 
um, I'd say three to four hours a week on a rotationary basis. And so informally, they can be meeting, go out to the community, they can meet at J Street, they can meet at Gales, they can meet here, and the community can come out and meet with them one-on-one -on -one so they're more accessible and rotate that around so our city council members can hear more from the people. Thank, Thank you. you. Linda. Mm -hmm. Question again? Oh, sure. What will you do to promote transparency and accountability within the city council to the people of Capitola? How will you involve the community in decision-making processes and ensure transparency in city council actions? And have you participated in the Capitola City Local Government Academy? Okay. Um, in terms of more community engagement, I think that's really, really critical. We have to hear the voices of all of the residents all across town in order to really have a full picture of what the needs are. And I think, you know, given our time where we really need to uh, uh, utilize social media to keep um, our constituents informed and to quickly disseminate information, I would advocate as a working parent for a kids' night at the same time as city council meetings so working parents and families can participate. We have a community room right there, um, and many, many of our residents work multiple jobs, so daytime meetings may be difficult. Evening me meetings are also difficult, but if we have it in conjunction with a kids' night, then perhaps we can get more young families and parents to be more involved and be um, to break down some of those barriers to active civic engagement. I'd encourage the city to utilize more virtual meetings and do the outreach necessary for more increased participation. That includes, you know, the strategic planning efforts that's in, uh, underway right now. We've got another month to collect data, including the Cliff Drive Resiliency Project. We need more community input, as well as re-envisioning the plan for the 41st Avenue corridor. I think we need, um, in order for any project to be successful, we need community input and buy-in. So I think all of those things are, are important. Uh, in terms of transparency, obviously I'll follow the Brown Act and um, any other sunshine, sunshine laws related to transparency. And I fully expect the voters and my constituents to hold me accountable for, for any actions if I were to be elected. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Marco. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think a huge part of transparency, trans, that's a new word, transparency, um, is, you know, really being a part of your community, being vocal, being a small business supporter, being out in the village, at the mall, things like that, and talking to business owners, constituents, community members, tourists, things like that. Um, I think that that's huge, and that really creates connectivity with you and, you um, and everybody else. I think that um, the, the city has done quite a bit of outreach recently. I mean, we have a ton of projects going on. We had the wharf going on. We just had the wharf reopening, and we had our little city booth with outreach about um, you know our strategic plan and what people in the community want to see uh, moving forward. And I think that that's huge. You know, it involved our staff, our city council as well. Um, so. Um, that event was just awesome altogether. Um, and as as the mayor, I, I actually changed our meeting times to start at six because as those meetings get on and on and on when they start at seven, nothing good happens after like 9 p.m. So I, I really wanted those to start earlier. If, um, if people are able to make earlier starts, I'm super interested in seeing what that would look like uh, for the community. So the outreach on that would be huge as well, you know, um, sort of do those, uh, survey monkey polls about what hours of the day are going to work for you. Um, and yeah, so I think uh, transparency is important. Um, I have, I've supported that this entire time being on council, um, abided by the Brown Act and things like that. Um, and uh, but speaking on the meetings, you know, I, I encourage people to come to them. I encourage I, it is it can be very daunting to come stand at a podium with a microphone in your face when you're not used to doing that. But um, keeping a little bit of not necessarily dialogue, but open communication with the council um, on things, um, whether it's just an announcement that you're having a yard sale this weekend or whatever it is, you know, show show your face so we know your face. And I think that's just a good way to keep keep a nice balance of community um, within the city. Thanks. Thank you. Enrique. Transparency, yes. Um, I believe that if you want transparency, you have to go out and 
find it. And what I mean by that is you have to meet people that are walking down the street. You have to go door to door. You have to go to the parks, go to the wharf opening. That's how you, you get to know what's going on when they come to the council meetings, you know, get back to them. Cause I know a lot of times we can't respond. So they say, like Margo said, they would speak, but then, you know, are their voices really being heard? Um, I'm a, I'm a social media. I like to be on social media. That's where I get a lot of my information information. And I don't think just posting information on social media is the best way to go. I believe that actually developing an ad and sending that ad out where it may cost a couple cents for every time the ad gets viewed. But I think that that's a good way to communicate uh, with our community. Also, our agendas, they need to be available. I know some people say, oh, it's easy, just click on it. I'm talking about some people like to walk down here, open up the door, and be able to read the agenda on a piece of paper, and they don't want to go online. Um, and, and I know that's already being done, and I would continue to do that as well. Um, and the time change. I think the time change is a great idea. I think it should also go with how daylight savings. Um, like you said, after 9 o'clock, nothing goes bad or nothing goes well. Well, if we change it according to how the, you know, the, um, the time change, I think that would be alleviate or it would actually encourage more people to come if there is daylight. Um, once it gets dark, people don't really like to leave the house. So I would encourage changing the time on daylight savings. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, we'll start with Melinda on this one. What is your opinion of the city's fiscal position? How would you ensure the city's budget is managed effectively and responsibly? Um, like I said previously, I think fiscal sustainability is probably one of the biggest, biggest issues we have in Capitola. Uh, one of my platforms is really promoting and emphasizing and um, uh, supporting economic development. I think it's, how should I say this? Um, the city should not have to pass a tax measure every 10 years or every eight years to pay our staff. I think we need to be more aggressive with our economic development proposals and really fill the empty corridors that we see, the empty spaces that we see all along 41st and our and in the village. So we really need to focus on our local businesses as well as how we should strategically bring in more businesses. Um, you know, I, I think that is how we will have the funds to provide the the services and the needs that this community requires. A quarter of our population is over 65 years old. And that means we need more services in the future in terms of healthcare, in terms of um, accessibility, ADA requirements, and just ways to get them around. Uh, we need to support infrastructure to support that aging population, as well as, you know, think about how we can increase more working people in the city. For a city to be sustainable and viable and healthy, we need more kids as well as more work working folks who will bring money to the city. And I think promoting and emphasizing and prioritizing economic development is how we will reach fiscal sustainability. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Marco. Thank you. Um, Yes, you know, we look at sales taxes and nobody really wants higher taxes, um, but I'll go out right now and just say yes on measure Y. Um, unfortunately, we are in a position where we do need a measure like that to pass within our city so that we can remain financially stable for the next seven to 10 years um, based on our budget. You know, the city goes through ebbs and flows with finances just like any, any household does. Inflation, COVID, everything affected us. So we um, need to adapt where we can. Um, I think that economic growth is huge. I think that's why we're intent on looking at places like the mall for development um, and um, housing development. Uh, we have a 
hotel in the works um, coming up on Hill Street. So I'm hoping that um, that those TOT numbers will will enhance our budget and also continue at the percentage that, that they're at. Um, you know, people are coming here and we do rely heavily on that. Um, and, you know, the, the, the sales tax sales tax thing, it, it is just a part of um, being here. We, we had the lowest sales tax within the county. So we're also sort of bringing ourselves up to par with those that live around us. Um, it's a way to spread the the weight of a tax. Um, so it's not just homeowners, local taxpayers, it's anybody that visits here. Anytime they spend a dollar here, some of that is gonna go to the city. Not that we get a huge percentage of it, but it does help. And um, passing this next measure, it, uh, it will help us get to a point so that we can continue to build on our economy and hopefully create more jobs and a better living situation for our workforce. Thank you, Marco. Enrique. You may have to repeat that question for me. Sure. What is your opinion of the city's fiscal position and how will you ensure the city's budget is managed effectively and responsibly? Thank you. Um, that's, a, that's a tough question for me. Um, but I do think that we need to communicate with the businesses and you know, ask our business owners what we need to do to create more business, whether it's you know, more infrastructure on the parking, whether it's more transportation so we can get to the mall, we can get down to the village. Um, I think a good way is we actually could have communicate with the nearby colleges, Cabrillo College and um, UC Santa Cruz. And maybe we can open up a, an offsite here where we can have some training for some of our youth that can help our businesses grow. Or we can figure out what we need. Is it more technology? training that we need in the community? Is it more um, health health uh, training? I think that those are opportunities where it can bring more residents to our community. Um, and I think that's, that's a good way to go. Thank you. Thank you. And Jerry. Great. Uh, thank you. So I think it's great to identify that where our city's operating budget is a little over $19 million. Um, after we go through the whole budget process, there's about $500,000 in, we'll call it surplus or leftovers um, that would be used for different types of projects that would be identified. Um, I would be, um, I think a lot of items are just carried over year to year from a budget standpoint. I would propose that we did a line item budget review and go through and make sure that we're identifying funds in each category as um, they are and they're not just automatic carryover. With that, um, when we talked about budget, I totally agree that there needs to be a, uh, economic st stimulus to our area so that we're not just living within the amount of money that we get every year. Um, we need to reach out to the BIA, who I've been endorsed by. Um, we need to reach out to the chamber um, and understand what they see as dynamics of what's going on and all our surrounding other area uh, businesses um, from like chambers and stuff on what it could be to um, establish a better approach to these things. Um, you know, if you go back and look at the history of Capitola, the mall used to be a driving revenue source for the whole entire county. Um, and we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and say that it's failed. And it's time for us to reflect, look back at ourselves, and say, what can we do to make it better? And that's not going to be one person, one council member, one planning commissioner, or one planning commission. That's going to be putting a group of people together in our community to see what that would be to bring that back. And that is going to provide funding for that. Um, for our community. Um, I totally agree with the comment regarding uh, Measure Y and our sales tax measure. It's, I think, an embarrassment that our city needs to go out and pass a sales tax measure to give our employees a raise to within 5% of medium. That's not where we need to be. We need to look at other ways of going about that. I do support Measure Y because I support our employees. I've strongly spoken about when Measure Y does get passed, I hope, that any extra money that would be allocated would be um, a community involvement process to look at how that money was going to be allocated and spent. And um, I guess my time's up. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. This one starts with Margo. And nighttime activity at Jade Street Park has become an increasing issue, especially for the residents of Tradewinds Park. What steps would you promote to better control late night gatherings, as well as even sometimes fireworks going off at this location? Yeah, funny you should mention that. Uh, just last night, sitting um, 
in the village, there was a huge firework that went off just right from our beach. And um, so those can be a little startling when you're not ready for that. Um, so apologies to the trade wind residents. Um, I understand that um, being right up against the park, it, you're kind of in that position of uh, being kind of vulnerable to that open space. Um, I'm really excited to see us uh, revamp that park altogether. I think um, by us putting a little bit of more attention in that space um, and redeveloping it, it will hopefully maybe deter some of that um, some of that action, um, but also I would never hesitate to call RPD. Um, hopefully there isn't something else drastic happening where they would have a fast response time. Um, I've dealt with RPD numerous times and they're all very helpful, very willing to um, go above and beyond. So, um, you know, maintaining relationships with um, those people that work in our community is is huge and um, it is a small community so oftentimes they may know those people that you're calling about so maybe they can have that conversation um, also our captains and our chiefs they're very receptive to emails um, and reaching out to them as well they're always willing to meet for coffee if there's a specific thing that's happening um, that you really want to discuss with a member of our police department or a staff member um, I wouldn't ever hesitate to do that um, and hopefully uh, it's not something that continues um, and with the improvements of the park hopefully it can be mitigated thanks thank you Margo Enrique uh, yes, um, unfortunately, youth will be youth in this uh, world and day and age that we live in. Um, I would definitely collaborate with the uh, law enforcement and first responders to continue to build strong relationships and um, establish regular communications with the local police and emergency service to understand their challenges and needs of what we can do to make Jade Street Park or any part of Capitola safer. You know, I would suggest also supporting youth programs and invest in after school programs, mentorship initiatives and job training for young people, which can reduce crime by providing positive outlets and opportunities for growth. So what does that mean? Let's give them something to do so they're not finding mischiefs at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. Maybe they can go to the elderly and help them, you know, clean their windows or uh, take out their garbage for them, walk their pets for them. We need to find more activities for our youth, more programs for our youth to do, and I can guarantee you that the crime will reduce, the crime will be reduced. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, with the Jade Street Park being revisioned, um, the new community center getting built, um, hopefully exterior lighting is gonna be addressed there to make it a better, safer place. Um, I think the leadership of our police department starting at our chief Andy Daly and through our captains um, has been amazing. Um, I have gone out in ride alongs and uh, attended, uh, you know, uh, ride alongs and understanding how our officers interact with our community. I do know when I was meeting with the Jade Street uh, folks, um, when I've been out walking and knocking on top and talking on doors, you know, they talked about the issues that they're having up their Jade Street Park. And then they talked about um, how much they appreciated uh, the police department coming out and meeting with them as a community. And I think we're all very lucky to live in a community that we have, um, I guess, resources to a small uh, police department. If you lived over in San Jose and you had an issue about noise or fireworks, um, I don't think you get a call back, number one. And number two is they might tell you to go online and send in an email. Um, so we're very blessed to have that. Um, I totally agree with the part with um, Enrique said about having a place for our youth to be um, engaged and have more activities. The more activities they have, the more involvement they'll have. Um, and also if there was um, an outreach between the youth and the Jade Street community together that those kids might understand if it is youth, it could be an adult, right? But if it is a youth uh, ordinance issue um, that maybe those kids understand what the impact is on their neighbors that are right next door. And so I think a lot of that comes back to youth education and stuff. Um, and so with that, I think looking at involvement with youth, the merger with that, um, with the new J Street, hopefully these issues are addressed. And I do know that if they're not, that community can reach back out to our police department and create more of a neighborhood watch process and address those issues. And I think that's why we're blessed to live in this beautiful place called Capitola. Thank you. 
Melinda. Hi, yeah, so um, I think our PD already does a really great job um, and we have to continue supporting their team and what they do. I've also done ride-alongs with the officers and we are 2.2 square miles. So within a few hours, we, re we went through all of Capitola multiple times. Um, I am excited that we're gonna have uh, uh, Treasure Cove. That's gonna be a new park. Um, uh, for all abilities and, and all children, as well as new rec center. So with the renovations of that space, I anticipate that we'll be utilizing it much more and with more foot traffic, hopefully that'll deter folks to make, you know, hopefully they won't make as many bad decisions. But it sounds like this is happening late night. So if our PD knows that it's an issue you know, making sure that they do rounds there more frequently at certain hours. And I really appreciate the few times I've called them where I'm, I am in town where we get a, more disruptions, let's say. And they have been, the response time has been great. It's a few minutes and they're there. So I think um, we have to continue to collaborate with our uh, PD as well as have um, you know, community outreach efforts with the trade winds residents and uh, talk to the teenagers or the folks that are causing the dis disruption so that they understand the ramifications of their behavior. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, next question. Um, you can take this anywhere you like. Name four goals you hope to accomplish during your term in office and you may want to fold into that your opinions on outdoor dining in the village, the um, fabled village hotel, <laughs> and any wharf enhancements you envision. Enrique. All right. Um, you want four? Obviously, my first one would be, you know, more activities for our youth. Um, the second one would be uh, public safety, um, better roadways for pedestrians and bike, uh, people on their bikes. Uh, more green, more greenways, more flashing lights, safer, um, so people can see them at nighttime. Uh, the fourth would be, I would like to see some some affordable housing in a place where it's not going to impact um, the rest of the city. Um, I, I, I go back, and I think the mall would be a great place because it's close to the freeway, um, and I think that we would start there. As far as the outdoor dining, um, that's one thing. I liked about COVID. I apologize for that, but we were able to sit outside and it's just so nice to be able to sit outside um, out of the restaurants that we had down in the Esplanade. I kind of, I do miss that. I would like to see that again, but I believe that a lot of the prices were a little too high. People didn't want to spend the money or the um, businesses didn't want to spend the money. Could be wrong on that, but that's what I've heard. Um, but I would definitely like to see more outside dining in other places in Capitola, including the mall and in the village as well, too. Um, was there another question that I missed? Um, wharf enhancements. Wharf enhancements. Great job on the wharf enhancements. Um, what I would install, you know, but I wasn't part of that, so I can't sit there and say anything wrong, but maybe a, a shower. Um, I think that would have been nice, um, but that would be my only difference there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's good. Thank, Thank you. you. Jerry. So since we have two minutes, and that's a very long question, I'll be brief on the couple items. Um, my four issues I would have is we need to resolve uh, the housing issue that is put in front of us that we need to res um, resolve and understand how that's going to be implemented through the rezoning. The next thing is ensure that there's mall redevelopment and that we as a community come together and meet with the developer. And then recently, in many years, we talked about the developer doesn't want to do anything. I think we need to flip that and come back as a community and go to the developer and say, this is what we want, this is what we need as a vision for our community and how we're gonna support that moving forward. The next thing is we need to identify for sure is our infrastructure. We're talking about uh, housing, I mean, we're talking about infrastructure uh, impacts from housing um, with the potential of just 1,336 new units in Capitola at one person, that's a 13% increase. Right now, our roads and our infrastructure is failing, and we're not making the correct investment into that. And the bottom line um, item really is number four, but really oversees all this. It goes back to the question of transparency and making sure that communities included in each one of these things through that. And then the closing part, you talked about the wharf, um, the remarkable outreach um, that CWEP did 
with the community um, was a vision of just enhancing the wharf to a place that we can open and call home again. Um, there is a whole new place that that wharf needs to get to. And uh, I applaud that the city has now uh, hired an architect and is going to do community outreach with that. I encourage everybody to continue the outrageous um, momentum that CWEP had going to continue what that vision on the wharf is going to look like. Is that is that going to be a new restaurant? Is that multiple different smaller restaurants that would um, work and in conjunction with our city our city um, village or and also um, stores up on, on 41st that they might want to come out and maybe have an annex or something like that. And then just one last thing, closing off with the outdoor dining. I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, I know it was very much a cost uh, impact to a lot of people. I still hear about hear about it today. Um, and I think there should be a way that our city can look at some sorts of funding or grants or something for um, encouraging for outdoor dining because it just prevent. I mean, it just promotes collaboration amongst our community. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, so my priority would be, uh, one of my priorities would be economic development because I really think fiscal sustainability and having a, th a vibrant and thriving business community in Capitola is essential. We need to restore the economic vitality of our commercial corridors. Um, and that way we can bring in more sales tax revenue to pay our amazing city employees what they deserve and also to provide residents with the services they want and need. Uh, secondly, workforce housing is important. Uh, we need to provide more housing for all income levels. So our local workforce has an opportunity to live where they work. That will, that will allow them to truly be a part of the community um, and be able to contribute as a community member. I want to see streamlining of single family development approvals to allow for local homeowners to accommodate growing families and to build their dream homes. I wanna see more active and public transportation infrastructure. By having a new metro station near the Capitola Mall site with residential units above, and I want to see finishing the rail trail segment 10 to provide a safe and convenient connection between Capitola and the surrounding communities and uh, to other amenities. Uh, the question about outdoor dining, I'd love to see more of that. Um, I know during COVID, the city actually uh, supported the building of British Ales outdoor space, and um, that's awesome, right? Because otherwise they wouldn't have had any seating at all. Uh, I think outdoor dining is great, especially because we live in a beautiful place and to be able to have that view while we eat is amazing. Was there another part of the question? Um, any enhancements you foresee in the wharf? Oh, uh, I would love to see a beer garden there, similar to a beer garden on Capitola Wharf. Um, so San Andreas would be a great vendor, as well as other rotating food vendors for folks. Thanks. Thank you. Margo. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, top priorities, I think it, it kind of is a, another part of the question, but just what the long-term plan of the wharf looks like, what the community wants to see, what... Um, other collaborations we could have um, with small businesses that are here or that want to grow as they um, enter our, our city. Um, I think we need to explore like sustainable ideas for out there. Um, unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't stop and I would hate to see anybody put millions and millions of dollars into a structure that is going to uh, be devastated at some point. Um, the cliff drive resiliency um, is huge for me. I want to make sure we can create a plan that is going to uphold that, uh, that thoroughfare into our city. I walk it or run it daily. Um, I know a lot of other people do. I see some of the same faces every every morning or afternoon. And um, I, I would really hate to lose that part of our city. So I want to make sure that we do whatever we can to protect it. Um, street and health, street health and safety. Um, I've worked a lot while being on council and with the other council members to implement certain safety, um, safety protocols within our streets. Um, 
you're welcome for the blinking crosswalk over Stockton Bridge. That's my crosswalk. Um, so yeah, I want to continue to be able to do things like that for our community. Uh, the Rispin Park, uh, the rebuild, the enhancements there, um, I think along with the Jade Street Park, I think it will make things safer for the area of Clare Street and provide a little bit of um, congruency with, with the library. I think that'll be a really nice area once that's complete. Um, Outdoor dining all the way, let's go. The city, I think we need to figure out a better program to make it more equitable for uh, the restaurants within the city limits. Um, I think it does create a more enticing way for people to spend their dollars here, along with create more jobs, because if you've got another section open in that restaurant, you need another server, another bartender, another busser. Let's keep that going, thanks. And here we are at our last question. Um, Please describe how your day-to-day -day life and community involvement has prepared you to be a council member. And my apologies in advance to Margo on this one. Give us your opinion of the changes on Bay Avenue just off the freeway. Okay. No, no, we're letting you cook on this one. Uh, Jerry, you start. <laughs> um, so um, I guess, uh, can you just repeat that, Mike? We're talking about volunteering, and then we went straight to Bay. Well, you're, 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 well <laughs> just at the, at the end, just give uh, you know, a five-second um, opinion of the changes that took place. Um, Well-intended, misguided, get it out of here, you know, all those things. Perfect. Uh, yeah, those two are very much connected. Um, so uh, one thing about volunteering, um, you know, I believe that volunteering is what makes Capitola such a special place. Um, I think you need to make the investment into Capitola yourself as a community member. Um, volunteering is, I think, the crux of what Capitola is about. Um, when my family moved here 14 years ago, uh, we first thing I did was walk over to the chamber is located around the corner and I walked in I met with Carrie Arnone and I joined the chamber and her question was <clears throat> what was your what's my business and I said that's not the purpose of why I'm here I'm here to support our local businesses and um, help move forward and so that was my start of being a volunteer in uh, Capitola um, I then you know moved on to the <clears throat> excuse me the Capitola Safety Foundation which is instrumental in providing additional support and <clears throat> excuse me, funding for the um, police department training for chaplains and stuff like that. It also provides some funding source for the junior guard at the same time. Um, I did a lot of work working with um, the Mid County Senior Center after the storm um, and uh, they had some needs to have additional board members. I sat on a board member for them for six months. When I saw a need in Capitola after um, the storm, I started a group called RAC, Random Acts of Capitola Kindness. And we go out and we reach out to the community and we provide services to them as needed. We go out and help seniors. We rebuild fences. We just finished a project down here in the village. We rebuilt the trestle that fell down about a year and a half ago. We rebuilt the um, fence up on Depot Hill. Um, that the city didn't have the abilities to uh, rebuild in a timeless fashion for the community. So volunteering is crux of getting you, I think, involved in the community, knowing who your neighbor is and what capital is all about, and then taking that up, and I call it volunteering on the planning commission, even though it's an appointed position. I think we just got a raise. I think we make $115 a meeting. Um, so I look at that as called volunteering because you put your time in, and it's really not a thing about cost. And going back to the Bay Hill intersection, um, uh, real quick, um, I applaud the city in trying to take an attempt at making a change. Uh, a lot of times I think local government and government, you know, is talked about, they never try anything. I applaud that they tried to do something. I applaud that they tried to take on the most cost effective measure to put something in play there. Um, but I think it would have to be looked at strongly and maybe altered in some way because of the resistance um, and the the way it's working right now doesn't seem the community members I've talked to that is working the best, and I think it could be augmented and changed some way to make it better. Thank you, Melinda. Can you repeat the question again? Um, please describe how your day-to-day -day life and volunteer activities and involvement in the community has prepared you to be a council member, and your thoughts on Bay Avenue. <laughs> so. Um, the last eight years, I've been really busy. I have th three kids, so it's pregnancy and uh, giving birth and nursing and working at the same time. Um, but I have 
volunteered when I could. During the COVID pandemic, uh, when the world was shutting down, I stepped up and volunteered to work at the respiratory clinic at the Palo Alto Medical Foundation clinics. I was in sometimes 100 degree tents with full PPE. Sometimes when it's raining hard, we're still out there seeing patients who are sick during a really scary and uncertain time in the community. Um, as well, during that, that time, we decided to unionize as a group of advanced practice clinicians, and we are the first group of APCs in the Sutter footprint to ever unionize. So it's a big deal. Um, I volunteered to be a captain um, and is now a union steward. We worked six years really, really hard to get the, the finally get the contract that we got a year and a half ago. So I am able to mobilize my peers and really rally them towards a common goal um, and uh, to fight for fair pay and good benefits and improved working conditions. I'm able. I'm, I'm also able to identify gaps in need and bridge those connections. During COVID, I also spearheaded a pilot program at the Aptos Clinic at PAMF where I worked at the time to really take a proactive panel management approach to diabetes. So we know that patients with diabetes are at the highest risk for COVID complications uh, and death. And so I used our EPIC tools, our electronic health record tools to uh, identify a list of patients and proactively outreach to those patients to get them in, to escalate their therapy, to give them education and to give, give them the medication and the services and the, the, the attention that they need to really get their diabetes under control. And that was a really success, successful program. And I was able to spread it throughout Santa Cruz County to the other clinics and trained other APCs. So that is my initiative that I took personally to do that. And I, I think I have a knack in identifying gaps in need and really collaborate with folks and bring people together. Thank you. Thank you. Margo. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess some some big parts of volunteering that I've done, um, actually part of a silver lining that did come out of COVID was um, I ended up with a little bit more free time. I was not working as much, um, but I um, held a ton of donation-only workouts via Zoom. Um, I'm just envisioning all those little squares. And um, I would take these donations and I would either buy a gift card at a local restaurant and then raffle it off on my Instagram page to somebody that attended the workout. I would put those funds back into the community, whether it was donations to uh, Second Harvest Food Bank or um, so societal things like that. Um, uh, I also, uh, in some of my free time, did my own village trash cleanup, wearing a mask in the heat. Um, but I would talk to a lot of people while I was down there. Um, and uh, we, we, as a city, we could no longer um, pay for our HOPE services that typically help us with the cleanup down there. So I would talk to a lot of people, see a lot of people. Um, and so that was always like a feel good moment. I've done beach cleanups and things like that. Uh, my profession, um, I've been in food service for longer than I'd like to admit. Um, you come across um, all types of situations, all types of people, and it really just uh, keeps you on your toes, but lets you really appreciate um, the, the humans that are out there. Um, I won't take up a ton of time on the on the Knob Hill uh, intersection. Um, it, you know, it... It was a quick build that was unanimously voted on by our council. Um, we have in the past done little incremental changes at that intersection because there have been a history, there has been a history of either near fatalities, fatalities, um, there's the senior center right there. This is a major area of foot traffic, car traffic, e-bike traffic, kids going to school, all kinds of things. Um, and this was our answer to the community. It was the fastest thing that we could do. It was the most cost-effective thing that we could do. And it's something that we're able to collect data by having out there. It's user error compounded by user error, I would say. So everybody treated that that intersection as either a raceway or a way to get somewhere quicker. And now they're trying to kind of cut through that at the Knob Hill parking lot as well. And I just ask for the community's patience at this time. While we still collect data, it may show that we need to go a different direction and that's totally fine. But that's why we've done this. Um, you know, and after that data is collected, 
It could be a roundabout. It could be a stoplight. It could be nothing. We don't know. So um, community outreach is going to have to go back out. Um, I've, I've heard a mixed bag of reviews about it. Some parents feel very grateful for what we've done because they do feel like it is safer for them and their children to get to and from school on their bikes. Um, um, but I've heard the opposite as well. So here's to waiting and seeing. Thanks. Thank you. Well, well said. Enrique. Thank you. Um, I'll just start with the Bay Avenue. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, hopefully we can get that cleaned up sooner than, than later. Um, people come to me and act like I'm the one who uh, decided that to happen. And I'm like, I'm not the one who decided that. You need to call the city hall or complain with them. But Call Margo. Call Margo. But what I do say is why they did it. And it was for the, you know, the fatality. And they needed to do something. Um, unfortunately, with the bridge being closed and Highway 1... Uh, the entrance there being closed, yeah, it's not a good, um, it's not, and I'm, even me, as a bus driver for the district, I'm legally cutting through, you know, um, Garden Deli up to the way so I can kind of cut to the traffic, but I still stay in the lanes and I, I don't do anything illegal. Um, yes, there was one more question. My volunteer work, goodness gracious, you know, I do get paid but I feel like working at the school is a volunteer service. Um, you know, it's great to mentor these young students. I'm actually working with Chief Daly, and he tells me it's Dilly Daly. Just remember, because I know I'm always going to tongue twist that, but I'm working with Chief, Chief Daly right now on possibly taking a tour of the Santa Cruz jail. He took me there about two weeks ago, and I think that would be a great, opportunity for our youth who don't fit in that box to be able to go to the Santa Cruz County Jail, speak with some of the inmates, and they can express, hey, you have to listen to the campus supervisors at your middle school or your teachers or your parents, or you're going to end up here. And I think that is a good volunteer service that I would do for our community, along with me passing out food, donating clothes to the different areas when the floods happened in Watsonville. Um, I love, I love Capitola. Thank you. Thank you. And um, it's wrap-up time. You have two minutes to uh, tell us everything else you haven't told us yet. And Margo, you're starting. Or sorry, Melinda, you're starting. Thank you all for being here and, and, and staying till the end. Um, so I want to say, you know, I'm here today because of the generosity of bravery of so many people, of my parents who raised me, of my friends and family who love and support me, and for all in our community who have fought for and continue to fight for our human dignity, inclusivity, justice, opportunity, and equity. I grew up in Oakland, a child of refugees from the Vietnam War in three bedrooms with four siblings as my parents worked to pursue the American dream. I know firsthand what housing instability is like, what hard work and perseverance looks like, and what hard-won prosperity looks like. As a career nurse practitioner, I can tell you that our community is only as healthy as the individuals who reside there. Patients must be cared for holistically because their challenges as well as their solutions are tied into their family, their culture, their socioeconomic status, and their housing status. This is how I look at public policy. Our community is changing from our demographics to the way we live our lives. And our government must reflect this new reality and have a vision for the future built on progress. We must approach policy holistically through a diverse economic lens, through a health equity lens, um, to consider all the positions, challenges, and impacts as we work to bring our community into its future. I know my heart and my compassion are my strengths. I can listen empathetically to my patients and my constituents. I make deep connections with the people in my life and help my patients through their health and life challenges by meeting them where they are. I'm always open to have tough conversations as we work together with honesty and optimism to, to solve some of our toughest problems in this community. I think things that are worth doing are hard, and we, are, we need leaders who can listen and help bring about change in a way that's meaningful to the community. I want to be a part of a community that values and celebrates diversity, invests in educating our youth, 
protects and cares for our elders. I believe that by fostering a sense of community, promoting economic growth and prioritizing the health, the well-being of our residents, we can build a more dynamic city that thrives for generations to come. I hope you will vote for me for Capitola City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Margo. Thank you. And once again, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Um, it, it shows that you care and that feels good for us. And thank you, Mike and the chamber and Dave. Um, I think that moving forward, um, something that I hold dear to myself is that we need consistent leadership here in the city. I think the city and the community deserves that. Um, we, uh, so in my last four years on council, we've done a lot of things like approve uh, two affordable housing units, we've finished the wharf project, many other um, projects like the jetty and the flume that ha have to do with our beaches that are so important to us here. Um, I want to continue to uh, see through projects that we've started. You know, you think four years sounds like a long time, but when you're sitting there doing all of these things all at once and you realize how long federal money takes, city money takes, you're like, wow, okay, so we've been talking about this since 2020, but we're just starting the groundbreaking now. So there's a lot of things like RISPIN, the final plans for the wharf that I um, really am looking forward to being a part of. Um, I'm currently endorsed by the entire council that I sit with now. I've um, been honored to serve which, with each person that's been on there, um, and I hope that I can continue to do so. Um, it's been an honor to be in this leadership position. I really had no idea what I was doing when I ran in the middle of COVID in 2020. And um, I have no regrets. I've learned so much. My mind has been open to so many things and I really want to encourage um, our community to maintain um, as, as a part of this community, come to the meetings and um, create transparency with, within ourselves as well. Um, I want to commit to economic development and um, thoughtful policies that are gonna work for everybody. We wanna ensure that this community is welcoming to everybody. Um, I want people to feel heard and respected, and I want to continue to do that and help be the face of this city. So thank you so much. Thank you, Margo. Enrique. All right. <clears throat> Thank you to everyone for being here tonight and for the thoughtful discussions we have had. This election is about making real progress for our community. I'm committed to youth programs and invest in our after school programs, mentorships and job training for young people, along with more affordable housing options and enhancing public safety. I believe the power of working together to achieve these goals. With your support, we can create a future where every voice is heard and every neighborhood thrives. I, Enrique Domo Jr., ask for your vote, not just for me, but for the betterment of our beloved city, Capitola. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Jerry. Uh, yeah, and so again, I'd like to thank the chamber, Mike and Dave for your time tonight. And I want to give a heartfelt thanks to the other candidates that for running. I know it's a, a challenge and it takes a lot of time away for our, our families <clears throat> and it's, um, it's a hard thing to go through, and I appreciate your guys' dedication in trying to take this step forward. Um, I want to take my strength as a community leader. I want to take those um, strengths and also be a voice for the community. Um, I've, many, many of my questions, I reflected back about our community having a voice and being a part of where the city's going to go. I think we're at a why in the road of where we're going to go, and I think having the community voice is very important. Um, I've, I have a five-step plan about having community first, and so um, it'll be posted on my website, and I just wanted to go over briefly what those five things are gonna be um, that I would propose. One thing I talked about earlier about community accessibility to our city council on having some sort of office hours or accessibility hours. Participatory budgeting and having the community involved in the budgeting process and more transparency to that process. Um, a better way to have a transparency hub on our website that talks about the projects um, you know, what's going on at the risk and when is it going to be completed? When is Jade Street Park out to bid? When is it going to come in? What's the goals and timelines? And I think that's important to have that. Um, I also want to make sure that we have community li listening sessions, that we go out to the schools when parents are dropping off their kids and that we are accessible to that. We go to our community, uh, to where the senior center is, or we go to where the senior housing is, and we're more accessible than, to them. And also I want to make sure that as a community, we challenge ourselves to work closer with the city to have um, better feedback on community surveys, 
Um, I see that there is, our, our, our city is trying, and I see that our community needs to make sure they support those things. So over the many years of living here in Capitola, I've proven I have a dedication to serve this community. I have proven that I will dedicate the time to being a city council member. And I've also think I've proven through my actions that I love this community a ton. Um, so if you have any more additional information that you need about me, you can always go to my website, which is jerryforcapitola.com. Um, and I'd be honored to have your vote. And from thank you from the bottom of my heart, um, and I would love to serve you as your next city council candidate. Thank you, Jerry. I want to thank everyone in the audience for being active participants in democracy. Look at what you're doing. Wow, you, you came out. <laughs> and I want to say that, um, Dave, thanks for your help over there. I just see the top of your head all the time, but I know you're there. Um, we are truly fortunate to have competent, passionate candidates in a, in a small town like this have the kind of quality that we've seen here tonight in, in these four individuals is truly moving. Um, and it also helps me never to consider to run again. Thank you very much, okay. Um, but well done, candidates. Give them a round of applause, please. And uh, as you all do, I love Capitola, and thank you, and good night, Capitola.